The Memphis Grizzlies went to Denver to take on one of the hottest teams in the NBA without nine players. So you can pretty much guess how that game went for the Grizzlies. A 128-103 to 103 loss. But guess what? Still a lot of takeaways. Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain, G.G. Jackson, Stock, and Scottie Pippen Jr., Lamar Stevens makes his return, and much more. We got all that coming up here on Locked on Grizzlies. You are Locked on Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone? What's going on? Welcome back to Locked on Grizzlies. I am your host today, DeMichael Cole, beat writer for the Commercial Appeal, right here in Memphis, Tennessee, covering your Grizzlies. Thank you guys for tuning in with us on today as we break down the Grizzlies matchup against the Denver Nuggets out there. Uh, a 128 to 103 loss. But again, a lot of takeaways on today's show, and we'll recap the game in the first segment. In the second segment, we'll talk about Scottie Pippen Jr., and there were a lot of strengths that he showed in this game, and then there are certain weaknesses that we should, uh, I guess, focus on more in his game as we go through the last couple weeks of the season. And then Lamar Stevens. Lamar Stevens made his return to the lineup, uh, so we'll talk about that here coming up on Locked on Grizzlies as well, because you know, that's what we like to talk about. The players coming back in the lineup. Brandon Clark will be back soon. Vince Williams Jr. also projected to be in the in the Grizzlies lineup probably in the next couple games or so. So uh, some injury fortunes are starting to go the Grizzlies way, and we'll see, you know, how those things play out. But all NBA players out there, close your ears for a second because today's episode is – Brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. Appreciate you guys for tuning in with us on Locked on Grizzlies. Make sure you continue to tune in each and everywhere you get Locked on Grizzlies, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you listen, wherever you watch, like on YouTube. Locked on Grizzlies is there. We'll start it off by recapping this game between the Grizzlies and the Nuggets. As I said at the top of the show, no one really expected the Grizzlies to win this game. I think they came in as 14 and a half point underdogs, depending on where you look, 15 and a half in certain spots, certain places. But they were heavy underdogs against this Nuggets team regardless. The Nuggets, yes, they were without Jamal Murray. They were without Aaron Gordon. So they were missing a couple starters as well. But you know who they weren't without? Nikola Jokic. And I said it recently that that matchup, anytime Jaron Jackson Jr. goes against those type of centers, that matchup takes precedent for me in Grizzlies games. And Jaron Jackson Jr. got whooped in this matchup. He got whooped. I don't think there's any other way to sugarcoat it. Uh, Jokic. I mean, he's the big dog. He is is the top center right now. You know, you can make an argument for Joel Embiid, but uh, he's the champion. He's the multiple MVP guy, and he's probably going to win MVP again this season. Uh, you got Jokic in this game, pretty much only played three quarters, 29 points, 11 boards, eight assists, really smooth, effective, efficient out there. And for Jaron Jackson Jr., it was kind of the opposite, and that's concerning to me. You know, we're, we're talking about – uh, Jokic going 29-11-8. By the way, three steals, 11 of 18 shooting from the field. Jaron Jackson Jr. dealt with foul trouble uh, in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and you know played a few minutes in the fourth quarter before sitting down. But overall, four of 18 shooting from the field, one of seven from three-point range, only four free throw attempts. So, you know, it wasn't the free throw line he was getting to. Had 11 points, did get four blocks, did get five assists. So the four blocks and five assists, kudos to Jaron Jackson Jr. in those, you know, two areas. But outside of that, very inefficient night, especially on the offensive end, you know, from a scoring standpoint. So Jokic won that center matchup handily, uh, not saying that, you know, we expected him not to win it, but it's the way he won. Jaron shooting four of 18 from the field, never really looked comfortable. Again, two fouls in the first quarter, had to go sit early. Picked up a third foul in the second quarter. 
had to go sit early. Picked up a fourth foul in the third quarter, and I think at that point, Taylor Jenkins was like the heck with it. Michael, the Grizzlies were already down 20-plus. Uh, you're probably not going to need him for much of the fourth quarter at that point, and he kept playing Jaron. Jaron played through the four fouls, didn't pick up a fifth in that third quarter, and that was that. But all in all, uh, these are the type of games that make me really question the idea of Jaron being the center. I know you, you've heard me on the record in recent games say that I won't be surprised. And I do think that the Grizzlies possibly could be leaning in the direction of putting Jaron Jackson Jr. at center simply because of the pieces that they have to be able to put around him. Uh, good rebounders like a Vince Williams Jr., a John Conchar, uh, maybe putting someone at the four like a Brandon Clark who can rebound the ball really well for his position and said, hey, if we put Jaron in a lineup with guys who rebound the basketball really well, we can, you know, uh, kind of limit his weakness in that area while also getting the strengths that he brings to the center position as a floor spacer, as a guy who can take the ball off the dribble, one of the better isolation scorers amongst big men in the NBA. So there are some positives to the idea of him playing center, but the negative is the rebounding and uh, his performance against Jokic definitely wasn't encouraging in any way, uh, no, any way, shape, or form. Moving on to Gigi Jackson, uh, who's another guy that we're watching really closely in terms of how the Grizzlies players are playing right now. Uh, Gigi Jackson finished this game with 15 points on 15 shot attempts, so still some inefficiency uh, going on there. Six of 15 shooting from the field, two of eight on three-pointers. So I think he's getting shots in the right spots. He's getting quality looks. Uh, all of those good things, three rebounds, two assists. Uh, the two assists stand out. Anytime he gets multiple assists at this point, it's a positive. But uh, I think you're going to start wanting to see at least three assists in every game going forward for Gigi Jackson as the Grizzlies are starting to put the ball in his hands a little bit more. And then there's the defensive side of it. Uh, Jamal Murray did not play, as we alluded to earlier. So uh, Gigi Jackson's primary assignment was Reggie Jackson. I mean, we're just talking about straight Jacksons in this show so far. Uh, Reggie Jackson. Four of nine shooting from the field, 15 points, eight assists. Did a little bit of the pick and roll that, that uh, we see with Jokic and Murray that they've become really good at uh, in the NBA. So defensively, I, I really didn't take too much from this game in terms of what Gigi Jackson did against uh, Reggie Jackson. I thought he was solid overall. Uh, offensively took decent shots, and there's nothing to complain about on that end for me as far as Gigi Jackson goes. Uh, Eight three-point attempts on 15 of shots. I, I I can't fault that too much because at the end of the day, when John Morant's healthy, when Desmond Bain is on the floor uh, with Jaron Jackson Jr. on the floor, that's probably what his stat line is going to look like most nights because his open shots are going to become are going to be the shots that are beyond the three-point line as teams try to make him shoot while they double team. You know, Ja when he's going to the paint, double team Jaron. You know, when he's uh, attacking off as of isolation. Or even Desmond Bain when he gets when he gets downhill, uh, Gigi Jackson will probably be a quote unquote weak link when he's in a lineup with those guys. So the looks that he got in this game against the Nuggets are very similar to the ones he's probably going to get. But uh, 15 points, you know, uh, for Gigi Jackson, but this game was pretty much one of those on and off uh, type of games for him because in three quarters he only had two points. It was the third quarter. A uh, big quarter for Gigi Jackson in this game against the Nuggets, 13 points alone in that frame. And that pretty much highlights, you know, the type of player he is right now. you got to take the good with the bad. He's 19 years old. He's going to have those stretches where you say, put Gigi in the starting line. And he's also going to have those stretches where you say, man, should we put Gigi Jackson in a rotation next year at 20 years old in his second season? Is that something we really want to do? You're going to have both of those stretches just watching him play right now. Just get used to it. But all in all, uh, that's just, you know, what it is right now. I was bragging on Santi Aldama recently. And uh, it's about the third time this season. Maybe I should stop bragging on Santi Aldama. Tell, you, tell me what you guys think. Um, I remember we were in Atlanta early this season. I forget the exact streak uh, that Santi had, but it was a three-point streak. And we were sitting in the locker room. We were just talking. About it, and I was like, man, you've you, you know, had like 16, 17 consecutive games now uh, where you made a three-pointer. Are, are you aware of it? You know, have you thought about it? 
And Santi, before answering that question, he he looked me in the eye and basically said, well, the last time someone brought that up, it ended for me. So, uh, you know, I try not to think about it. And guess what? In that next game, Santi's three-point streak was snapped. So he had me thinking, oh, snap, is, is it my fault? Did I just <laughs> lead to Santi? Three-point streak coming to an end? And I was bragging on him recently, you know, just the scoring ability, uh, the rebounding, just his all-around game in terms of Santi is the, the prototypical player on this Grizzlies team right now where it feels like when you put him on the floor with the best players on the team, his game elevates uh, around those guys. And when you take those players off of the floor, his game just goes, it goes down. And it's like, man, Santi is a miss. But when you put him on the floor with Ja, Dez, Jen, says, hmm, Santi, getting him at 30 a pick looks pretty good value. So pretty much depends who he's on the floor with in this game. Another case of that, as Jaron and Desmond Bain dealt with foul trouble earlier, Santi really never got in the rhythm. Finished with five points. And it's not just that. I mean, he wasn't even shooting the ball. 31 minutes played, uh, four field goal attempts, three of them from three-point range. Uh, did have nine rebounds, as I alluded to earlier, three assists, four blocks, and a steal. So a uh, very strong defensive game from an activity standpoint for Santi. But four shot attempts, 31 minutes. Uh, I, I just, for a guy his size, you just can't fathom uh, why that is the case for him. And, and I think that's that's why we're having this conversation. That's something that's going to have to improve, and that's an area – uh, that he needs to 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 work on from an aggressiveness standpoint, no matter who's on the floor, uh, to be the player that the Grizzlies want and need him to be going forward. Speaking of the player that the Grizzlies want and need to be something, Scottie Pippen Jr., he's getting the extended run at point guard, and he got the start in this game against the Nuggets. We're going to talk about how he fared coming up here after the break. But before we get to those things, today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And it's not just that simple. Over at Prize Picks, it's demon time right now. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. That's right. You can turn $10 into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. I, I, when it comes to prize picks for me, I, I'm a big fan of the players and stats uh, to highlight the winnings that I got from prize picks. For example, Anthony Davis right now uh, for more than two blocks per game feels like a strong projection to go out there and make. You look at that, you're a Luke Doncic fan, uh, try Luka Doncic for more than 30 points as a projection as well. How do you go do these? How do you take advantage of these opportunities? Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code in all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and get a first deposit match of up to $100. Coming up next on Locked on Grizzlies, I'm going to talk about Scotty Pippen Jr. and what he means for this team. Stay locked on Grizzlies, everyone. I am DeMichael Cole, beat writer for the Commercial Appeal right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you guys for tuning in to Locked on Grizzlies with us today. In the first segment, we recap a Grizzlies matchup against the Denver Nuggets. Uh, the Grizzlies lost 128-103, blowout loss, a wire-to-wire win for the Nuggets. So the result was... Never really in doubt. So when you get in games like that at this point in the season, because the Grizzlies are eliminated from playoff contention and all of that good stuff, you kind of got to pivot to a long-term type of focus. And with this team, the point guard position stands out to me, as well as the center spot. And it's not the starting point guard position because, duh, John Morant. But it's what happens behind that. 
Because it's easy to say, oh, yeah, you just throw Marcus Smart in that situation, right? But I think in the little time we did see Marcus Smart this season, many of you, if not all of you, will agree that he played his best basketball with the Grizzlies when he was able to play off of the ball. When Memphis started the season 6-19 and and Marcus Smart played, you know, pretty much in the first 11, 12 of those games, uh, he was playing point guard. And it wasn't pretty. It was kind of ugly a lot of times. But when John Morant got in that lineup and he was able to play off the ball a little bit more, then it looked like the Grizzlies had something going. And Marcus Smart looked like that player who, you know, was a big part of all those great seasons that the Celtics had while making the playoffs every single year of his NBA career. So with all that being said, who's going to step into that role? As that secondary point guard, you know, someone who could play 10, 12, 14 minutes a game, Derrick Rose could be that guy. You know, some of you are sick of the injuries and and all that with Derrick Rose, who's out with injury right now. But he is productive. From I I, I would not be opposed to the idea of saying, hey, Derrick Rose, 10 to 12 minutes, all we need. If you can stay healthy and, and those stretches for the most part, we'll be fine. But can you trust that right now? I don't think so. The next option on the Grizzlies roster is Scottie Pippen Jr. Scottie Pippen Jr. signed a two-way deal with the Grizzlies in January. And I remember one of the first things that stood out to me, and I wrote about it as well when I was talking to him, was the idea that he feels undervalued and underrated despite what he's done in his basketball life. And it struck me as surprising because his name is Scottie Pippen Jr. Your dad is a six-time NBA champion and played alongside of Michael Jordan to form one of the best duos that the NBA has ever seen. Like, you're, there's no way you're undervalued or underrated or whatever the case may be. But then you go look at his numbers. Two-time All-SEC all player at Vanderbilt doesn't get drafted. It's a little fishy. Then he goes to the South Bay Lakers in the G League, putting up numbers over there, over 20 points per game, over five assists per game, both seasons. Still doesn't really catch on with the Los Angeles Lakers. So then he ends up in Memphis, and you know he says all that he said about being undervalued and whatnot. And now I feel like he's in a situation where we're starting to see that he is valued because the Grizzlies are giving him extended opportunities, and quite frankly, they have opportunity for the backup point guard position. And – as Joe Mullinex said in a recent episode, you know, it, I am I am someone who has been an advocate for the idea of Scottie Pippen Jr. being a potential 15-man roster player on this team. Right now he's on a two-way contract, and it isn't something that has to be addressed here soon because you can take Scottie Pippen Jr. into next season on that two-way deal and treat it like a Vince Williams Jr. A situation where you don't have to uh, upgrade him until – Uh, You get closer to that 50-game mark or whatever the case may be. But I think there's a case to be be made that he is one of the point guards uh, making an impact on this roster. I've said that a bunch of times. But let's go through the strengths and weaknesses because I think this game against the Denver Nuggets was a strong example of what makes Scottie Pippen Jr., a guy who I feel like could be on this roster, and what makes him a guy who's currently on a two-way contract. Like, why hasn't he gotten an NBA opportunity before this? I think this game showed both cases. Starting off with the strength, we got to start with the good, right? The scoring ability of Scottie Pippen Jr. really stands out to me. And this game was another example of that. He finished with 17 points, 5 of 9 shooting, 3 of 6 on three-pointers, uh, I mean, he knocked down a couple of those left wing three pointers, looked comfortable in doing so. 17 points, four assists. Uh, the scoring is plus, and it has been. It, again, 20 points per game in the G League. Uh, he's done it since he's been with the Grizzlies. He looks, he's taking comfortable shots. Of the starters, he took the fourth most shot, shots. So even though he has this kind of scoring guard reputation, he still was getting teammates involved and not pretty much ball hogging, you know, in this situation. Like Desmond Bain had 14 shots. Jaron Jackson Jr. 18. Gigi Jackson 15. Then there's Scottie Pippen down there with nine. 
Uh, and with those nine shots, he was very efficient. And that isn't anything new. That's kind of who he been, who he has been with the Grizzlies as a player up to this point. And then there's the weakness. Before we get to the weakness, though, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Uh, have, have to turn down the volume with all that shouting in the background? Well, make the switch over to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming and hoopla. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. Now back to Scotty Pippen Jr. Talk about the strength. It's the scoring. We all know that. But here's the weakness that you got to be mindful of when you say, oh, I think Scotty Pippen Jr. is the next Tyus Jones, for example. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that's a lazy comparison. I think that's a, hey, Tyus Jones was the last Grizzlies backup point guard who played meaningful minutes and was good at it. Or it might be an even lazier comparison. You say, oh, look, Tyus Jones is a light-skinned brother who can knock down a three-point shot. Scottie Pippen is a light-skinned brother who can knock down a three-point shot. It goes deeper than that, though. It goes much deeper. These guys' games, while there are some similarities, I think they both play like this real smooth brand of basketball. You know, not the greatest athletes in the world, but they make up for it in a lot of other ways. But that's where it ends. There is no Tyus Jones comparison. You know why? Because Tyus Jones, last season and the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that, and this year, has led the NBA in assist to turnover ratio. Scottie Pippen Jr., for all the things that he's great at, he's never going to lead the NBA in assist to turnover ratio, unless there's some drastic turnaround. Just don't, don't expect that to happen. When he was in the G League, we talked about averaging around five assists per game. Yes, both years. But he also was always around three turnovers per game. And the turnovers do show occasionally with the Memphis Grizzlies. And as a point guard, you know, you want a guy who's going to take care of the ball. Uh, I know being around these guys, John Morant, Derrick Rose, they are hard on themselves when they turn the basketball over. In this game against the Nuggets, Scottie Pippen Jr. finished with four assists, but he had five turnovers. And some of the turnovers are just, you know, I mean, Jokic had a steal on Scottie Pippen Jr. where uh, Scottie Pippen Jr. just made a lazy pass and threw it right into the hands of Jokic. And there have been a couple cases of that uh, with him. He There was another example where he threw a lead pass uh, to Santi Aldama, and maybe that could be, you know, a chemistry thing. Like, I think he was coming off a pick and roll, or he just – he threw a really risky pass uh, that led Santi Aldama too far and just hopped out of bounds. I do believe in him as a playmaker. I think there is some talent there, but I think that you have to be mindful of the fact that the turnovers are cause for concern at this point. Uh, He's going to get plenty opportunity with the Grizzlies over these last 10 to 12 games. This isn't to say, I mean, I don't, what's understood doesn't even have to be explained. Most of you know. I'm high on Scottie Pippen Jr. I think he is the potential backup point guard uh, that the Grizzlies could could use for cheap. Like you, you don't have to go out and get some veteran that's going to take up, you know, a decent amount of money. You got Scottie Pippen Jr., a guy who you can kind of uh, put into your, I guess, uh, core or whatever the case may be, uh, if, to a lesser degree because he would be playing a lesser valued spot as a backup point guard. So I think there is value there. But as we've highlighted the strengths that he brings as a scorer, uh, the, the facilitating, the productivity, there is the weakness, turnovers. He needs to correct those in order to solidify that role, and we won't have to talk about the idea of someone else potentially being the backup point guard for the Memphis Grizzlies. Coming up on Locked on Grizzlies, we got to talk about another guy who could be solidifying the backup role, and that's Lamar Stevens. He has the opportunity to do just that. He came back. He made his return to the lineup. We're going to talk about how he played in this game against the Nuggets coming up next here. But before we get to that, today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is convenient, flexible, and it's online therapy for any and everyone out there. Here's the thing about BetterHelp. 
Uh, sometimes we all need an opportunity to get something off our chest, whether it's big, small, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let them out, especially someone who's unbiased on your life. So today I want to say how I really feel about something. And you might even think about saying the same thing. For me, I said it a couple times at this point, and I'm going to keep saying it until the Grizzlies get another center that makes me eat these words. I am not a fan of the Stephen Adams trade. I can't get behind it. I'm still processing it. And that is an example of why I need better help. But guess what? Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems that are much bigger than a favorite sports team. And it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, go give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and it's designed to be flexible and suitable to your schedule. All you have to do right now is visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off of your first month. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off of your first month month. Coming up here on Locked on Grizzlies, we're going to talk about Lamar Stevens and the flashes that he gave the Grizzlies in this game against the Nuggets. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Locked on Grizzlies, everyone. I am DeMichael Cole, beat writer for the Commercial Appeal here in Memphis, Tennessee, covering your Grizzlies. Thank you for tuning in to Locked on Grizzlies with me on today as we recap the game against the Grizzlies, uh, between the Grizzlies and the Nuggets. Uh, We talked about Scottie Pippen, his strengths and his weaknesses, primarily the strengths as the scorer and a facilitator. And then there's the weakness of the turnovers. Uh, the turnover bug is, has gotten to him a little bit. He had five turnovers against the Nuggets, a team high for the Grizzlies. Uh, that's something that he's going to have to correct in order to solidify the idea that he can be uh, the future backup point guard for the Memphis Grizzlies. Lamar Stevens made his return. If you, if you don't remember, he was dealing with a left adductor strain, uh, missed the past six games, finally made his return to the lineup. And this was a guy I've been really curious to see. And, I mean, for good reason, right? He led the Grizzlies with 19 points in this game. Uh, most of his work came in the fourth quarter. I think he had 13 points in the fourth quarter. So a lot of garbage time points. But I'm looking beyond that because here's why. Lamar Stevens in his first 12 games with the Grizzlies, very productive. Like this, we're talking, this was his 13th game, the Nuggets game. So his first 12 games, over 11 points a game, about five rebounds. All of that was cool, but a lot of it came while playing out of position. I mean, we saw him guarding Giannis Antetokounmpo, Alperin Sagoon, Zion Williamson uh, defensively, but he was also playing like the backup center spot because Trey Jemison has had the two-way contract limitations. Uh, that's limited his his availability going down the stretch, which has led to the Grizzlies, you know, before they were able to get William Gabriel on the 10-day contract and things like that. They had to play Lamar Stevens as the backup center, and he was okay in that role. Like, again, he was productive. We just went over the scoring numbers. But at the end of the day, you knew that's not the role he's going to have when Marcus Smart, John Morant, and Desmond Bain and Brandon Clark are all back. That's not the role he's going to have. So I feel like if you make a decision on Lamar Stevens, we're we're talking about a decision this offseason on the idea of should he be back or should you just let him go, you got to at least see him at his natural position or, in better words, the position that he's going to be playing with the Grizzlies when the team is at at full health. Lamar Stevens isn't going to be playing any backup center when you got Brandon Clark Jaron Jackson Jr., and potentially another big man that's going to be brought into the fold on the roster next season. He's not going to be playing any backup center. He's going to be playing the three and the four. He's going to be playing that David Roddy type of role. And that's what we saw in this Nuggets game. We've seen it now. Don't get me wrong. We've seen it uh, in his last couple games before the injuries uh, a lot more with him playing at the three and the four. But this game, 19 points. Uh, for Lamar Stevens. He was two or four in the mid range. You know, he likes to get in that mid range area and get busy. Six of 10 from the field, uh, missed his only three point attempt, which was encouraging to me because uh, now that he's playing on the perimeter more, there is a tendency for players to say, Hey, I'm on the perimeter more. Uh, you're going to get more looks for three pointers to settle. Lamar Stevens didn't settle. Oh, one from three point range, uh, chalked up three assists, I mean, two assists, three rebounds as well. 
in this game while shooting six of 10 from the field. So here's my take on Lamar Stevens. I think right now it's still too soon. I think he is working up against the eight ball. Like uh, the politics of the decision are not in his favor because if you look at the Grizzlies roster right now, there's only one roster spot that you know for certainty is going to be open going into the offseason. And that's Lamar Stevens' spot. And right now you have a first-round pick that's projected to be sixth or seventh in the draft. And if you get that pick and you draft the player there, that player has to be put on a guaranteed contract. So that would be your 15th player, which means there wouldn't even be a spot for Lamar Stevens. But there are movable pieces. We've talked about the idea of a trade for a guy like Zaire Williams. Uh, then there are other players out there, right? Uh, Derrick Rose is on a minimum contract. Yes, he has another season, but it's a minimum deal. So uh, that is one where you can part ways of a very little extra cost. And then there's simpler decisions, you know, team option for Luke Kennard. Uh, there's a player option for Yuta Watanabe who in, and whatnot. So there are ways that the Grizzlies can create roster space if they say, hey, Lamar Stevens is so valuable that we're willing to, to eat up some money or whatever the case may be to bring him back. I think this game is one that he needs to build on. If Lamar Stevens puts together more games where he's getting over 15 points, 15 points, 15 points, with the ability to guard threes, guard fours, and even fives in, in certain situations, I think he's going to make himself a, a, a potential roster candidate. Uh, for next season and it's tough again he's working it's not in his favor it is not in his favor uh, because of everything surrounding the situation but with all that being said 19 points against the Nuggets it's a good starting point for him to build on as this guy who's going to play the three and the four he continues to build on that I like Lamar Stevens chances to at least make the Grizzlies uh, make some other moves because he's better or he's at least playing better than other wings on this roster right now. And that has to mean something going forward in his situation. Speaking of going forward, after you tune in to Locked On Grizzlies, make sure you go over to Locked On Sports today because Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels at Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today. It's now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Appreciate you guys for tuning in to Locked On Grizzlies uh, with me today. Tomorrow, me and Joe Mullinex will be with you uh, for that show, and I don't think it's a big surprise what we're going to talk about. Brandon Clark closing in. On his season debut for the Grizzlies, me and Joe Mullen has got a lot to talk about regarding Brandon Clark and what his potential return means for the Memphis Grizzlies. So make sure you stay tuned for that as we break it down in our next episode. But today's Locked On Grizzlies is, remember, it's available and it's wherever you get podcasts. Until next time, I'll see you. I'm DeMichael Cole.